Hey everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Kitchen and in today's cooking class what I'm hoping to show you guys is my take on Swedish meatballs. So we're going to be making really healthy Swedish meatballs. We're going to combine that with a wonderful cauliflower mash and some pickles and try and make it as traditional as possible because would you believe two weeks ago today, two weeks ago today, I um, had the honor and I will say it's an honor of hanging out in um, Sweden for the weekend. It was my first trip to Sweden, my very first trip. And I want to give a very big hello and a very big um, I hope you're watching to our Swedish family as well who looked after us amazingly well while we we're in Sweden. Uh, we stayed in Stockholm and Stockholm is an amazingly beautiful city and I suggest if you haven't ever been or even thought of going to Sweden you have to go. Like it is fantastic. It is so cultural but not only is it there's so much culture going on in Sweden the other thing I really love about Sweden is the architecture as well. So if you're into architecture like me you like a little bit of art you like things that are a little bit quirky so that they mix the old school and the new school really, really well in Sweden. Can I just say IKEA? <laughs> For anyone who's never been to Sweden, IKEA uh, as well. So you guys know that Sweden's design is world class. It is phenomenal. But the thing that Sweden does really, really well, and I would love to know the backstory of why Sweden does meatballs really, really well, but they, they honestly do. So um, I had the pleasure of dining in an establishment called Meatballs for the People. And they literally, as you could imagine, as the name would suggest, they focus on meatballs. So I was inspired. I was so inspired to come back to um, Sydney, back into my kitchen, and to create a healthy version for, for us. And hello to Coral, who's watching us from um, Rarotonga. Thank you for joining us, and to Barb as well, Morena. Um, it's afternoon, is it afternoon? It doesn't matter, Morena, Barb. Thank you for joining us as well. Um, so what I thought I'd do is make these meatballs, teach you guys how to make really healthy meatballs, but I'm actually not teaching you, because the recipe I'm using is straight out of the book. So I'm gonna grab the, Grab the book. So the recipe I'm doing is I'm going to be doing turkey meatballs because you know turkey is a very lean protein. It's got really low fat as well, so it's really really good for us. So I'm going to be making turkey meatballs with cauliflower mash, pickles, and a Swedish style gravy all together. But the recipe literally comes from the book. So um, if you have the book at home on page 75. You may have seen, you may have sort of scrolled through the book and gone, oh, that looks great. They are great. These are my turkey meatballs. Those are the meatballs we're going to be doing today. And they are so incredibly good for us. That's why they're in the book. Really good for our gut health, really good for weight loss as well. Um, if you are wanting to have meatballs without all the high fat and stuff, this is the recipe for you. So um, straight from the book, page 75, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make my turkey meatballs. Now, you don't just have to use turkey in this recipe for your meatballs. You could also do them with chicken, of course, which for some people they struggle to find um, meatball, uh, sorry, turkey mince or turkey meat raw. So if you struggle to find that, you can replace the turkey for chicken, of course you can. You can also do these meatballs with lamb, you can do them with beef. When I was dining at Meatballs and the People, they were doing them with moose <laughs> and wild boar. You could do that if you've got wild boar, and I've got a friend way down in um, the, the middle of, the, of New Zealand who hunts all the time, her and her husband, they go hunting all the time. So they may have some wild boar, you can make meatballs, but literally you're not limited to just turkey, but I must say, turkey meatballs are one of my favorites because the flavor is quite exceptional. So we're gonna be doing turkey meatballs, cauliflower mash. Um, cauliflower mash, mash is also in the book, right at the back, I believe. It's at the back, so I teach you guys how to make cauliflower mash at the back. The recipes are all in there. You don't have to go anywhere. Um, Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, you can still purchase a copy of this book. Um, all you need to do is go to bridgetscookbook.com and you can purchase a copy of the book. But let's get into the recipe. I'm going to bring you down to the bench so you can see what's going on. As I was saying, we are making turkey meatballs to start. So I'm going to be making it in my little machine here. Um, you don't have to make it in one of these, you could do it by hand, but that would require you to buy mints in advance, which actually I have, because one thing I do ha have discovered is that buying fresh turkey meat, so the, so the breast is really hard to find, but it's quite easy to find turkey mints. So I am going to be using turkey mints, and I've got, um, all I'm gonna do, clean fingers of course, is put the mints into my little uh, food processor there, if you, like I said, if you can find turkey, 
like turkey breast it is definitely better to use the breast but just in case you're struggling and and it can be difficult to come across depending on you know where you're located and what your your supermarket sells if it's hard to come you might find the mints already pre done easier for you that's fine as well so we put the mints into our little container into our little our little food processor i'm then going to add some flavor in the way of garlic minced already of course you guys know i love to mince my garlic pre-mince my garlic so a couple tablespoons of the garlic goes in i'm going to be adding ginger as well because i love ginger fresh ginger that i just minced up myself actually minced up the ginger in the food processor too I'm going to be adding some dried herbs. I know I don't use dried herbs often, but this is one of those occasions where dried herbs are actually quite nice in the meatballs. There are two types of dried herbs that I don't mind using because I find the flavor, flavor is quite similar to fresh. One of those dried herbs is rosemary, which I have in here. So I'm going to put in some dried rosemary. It's going to go in. And the other herb that I don't mind using is dried thyme. I find that those two are a really, um, very pungent even in their dried form whereas with most other herbs you will always hear me saying please use fresh when it comes to thyme and rosemary and oregano as well i find that they hold their own when it comes to being dried so we've got those in there let's make sure we also add some seasoning really really important that we add a bit of seasoning because we want to make sure that our turkey meatballs have a lovely flavor so i'm adding some himalayan salt i'm also going to add in some some freshly ground black pepper a good grinding of pepper goes in there and then the last thing I'm going to add into our turkey meatballs once again it's optional some fresh herbs and the fresh herbs I'm using today is our coriander and I'm going to just use the stalks because remember we want we want the um, flavor of the herbs to hold up once we cook them and if I put the leaves in, they wouldn't taste quite they were kind of dry and they'll be a bit manky and the flavor is not as strong as what happens down at the base end so I'm just going to cut off some of the stalks just roughly because remember it's going into our food processor and then those are going to go in there as well like that and the last thing I'm going to add in just for a little bit of um, flavor as well is I'm going to put in just a little bit of tamari a couple tablespoons of tamari is going to go in there that's our gluten-free soy sauce the lid goes on and let's see if my little machine can handle it's quite full today I might have to I might have to um, halve it because it is quite full let's have a little look You can see it's not really handing it that well. <laughs> it's a little bit full, Bridge. I'm gonna take half out. That's gonna make it a lot easier. So take half out. You kind of only want to have it at half full, definitely. That should probably be a lot easier for it to manage now. Here we go. <laughs> a bowl and then I'm going to do the other half just mi mixing it through remember the mince has already been made so you already can get away with the mince but what you're trying to do is just get the herbs and the garlic all sort of you know uh, oops put that in first got to, you always got to put in the blade first because you want to squish it down it can't have any uh, anything underneath it otherwise it won't connect but all we're trying to do is just to to mix in the ingredients. If you are buying mix, you could totally do this by hand as well. Yes, perfect. Happy with that. So that now comes out. Somewhere I've got a spatula hanging around. No, but I've got a spoon. So this is the base to our meatballs. As, and as I was saying, you can use any type of mince here. Any type of meat can go into here. And um, I'm putting together for the, our vegetarian friends, I will be putting together some vegetarian meatballs very, very soon. As soon as I get a bit of breathing time and breathing space, I'll be doing that for us. So I'm pretty excited about that. But in the meantime, you have this amazing recipe for uh, lamb, beef, chicken, or turkey, which works really well. 
Okay, so give it, give it a bit of a blend. And as you can see, it's quite a tight meatball, so it's quite a fine grind. Um, but that's okay, because all we need to do now is begin to roll the meatballs. And there is a little bit of a technique. There is a tiny little technique involved in rolling meatballs or anything where you need to get your hands involved. First technique is hands need to be clean. So make sure you've sanitized and you've washed your hands before you start cooking. Really, really, really important. And when it comes time to roll the meatballs, what I have in here is just a little container of water. That's going to really help. Just cold water, nothing more than that. I'll grab myself up a plate, put our meatballs into. And what you want to do is just firstly wet your fingers, not like just dampen, like you don't have to that saturate them, just dampen your fingers. Take a tablespoon of the meat of the meatball mixture. And now that your fingers are damp, what you'll find is that it's really, really easy for you to then roll it. If your fingers are dry, that meat would just stick to it. But because our, my fingers are wet and they're just like I said, just a little bit damp, the meat just kind of falls off it quite nicely. It creates almost like a non-stick <coughs> surface. So then you get your meatball. Still a couple more for you guys. You could weigh this on scales if you're really particular about um, the grams. Absolutely, feel free to weigh uh, to to weigh your your meat as you're doing it. But I find that you know if you're using a tablespoon, like a heap tablespoon, it's a pretty good um, weight gauge as well. Oh, Barb, you're in Perth. No wonder. Hi to Tracy. You're on your way back from Melbourne. Safe travels with your. Your fur babies, my darling, safe travels. I hope you're not watching me while you're driving. <laughs> I really hope, right, there we go. I'll do a couple more. Cause I actually, you, one of the things about making meatballs, unless you're making like 10 kilos of meatballs, this is just 500 grams, you can get into a bit of a rhythm and it's actually quite therapeutic. I do find, I'm not sure about you guys, but I do find cooking quite therapeutic. So remember, wet your fingers. Oh, it becomes so non-stick, it's wonderful. For one more, one more, I'm having fun. I know, who thought making meatballs was fun? But I do, I love it, and I, like literally, I went into this meatball, um, you know, meatballs for the people, this restaurant in Stockholm that specialize in meatballs, and, and you know, and they had like the traditional potato mash and, and um, ligonberry um, jam, which is quite a sweet jam. They had all those sort of things. And I was just so inspired to come and create something delicious for us, because I, I gotta say, I'm a bit of a fan when it comes to meatballs. I grew up eating minced everything because that was the cheapest option. So for me, you know, having options of, of something that's really budget friendly, which is making meatballs budget friendly, but tastes delicious, I'm totally in for it. So I'm just gonna put that there. I'll make the rest of those later because I wanna show you the cooking process. How do we cook these to make sure they're healthy? Traditionally, meatballs will be done in a frying pan with lots of oil and butter and they'll be basted, in, which is really fabulous, but potentially not the most healthy way to do it. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just going to be dousing them in just a little bit more tamari. It's gonna help with the color, that's all. So I just put a bit of tamari into the, into the bowl. I'm just gonna literally just drag them through. That was hardly any tamari, you don't need much at all. If you have um, my sticky sauce, please feel free to use sticky sauce now as well, just to give them that little bit of extra coating and flavor on the outside. And what I have here, you guys can't currently see, is I have my air fryer, and it's currently sitting on 200 degrees, which is three bit Celsius, which is 390 degrees Fahrenheit for all our Amer American friends who are watching. I've got that on, and I'm gonna pop the meatballs straight into the air fryer. That is the best way to do it. And the uh, meatballs only need, don't need very long. Oh, hear the sizzle? That means that's because I've preheated my air fryer. It always pays to preheat your air fryer just for a couple of minutes. Two minutes is all it needs. But the, um, the effect is so, oops, lampshade down. The effect is so much better when you preheat your air fryer just for two minutes. I, it's like you never put a, a, like a cake into a cold oven. That doesn't happen, right? We always preheat. Think of this like a little mini oven. You wanna preheat it, but it only needs two minutes. So two minutes preheating on 200 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna set the time for seven minutes because that's all it needs is seven minutes. So where are we? There we go, seven minutes. Oh, 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 perfect. All right, seven minutes is done. We can move on to the next item on the agenda. And the next item on the agenda is the other thing that I'd like to cook up, cook up today. 
which is the um, the gravy because Swedish meatballs if you've ever been to Ikea you may not have been to Sweden but you may have been to Ikea and you may have seen the Swedish meatballs in that lovely looking gravy let's make a healthy gravy let me grab my pan there it is I want you guys to come down here so you can see what's going on there we go all right are you guys in the pan yes you are perfect so um, when it comes to making gravy gravy tends to be made and in general it's made with a little bit of flour and stuff like that obviously I don't I'm gluten free so I don't use flour but what I am going to use um, is just some different types of flavors that are a little bit unexpected now if you don't have an air fryer and you cook your meatballs in the frying pan this is actually a really nice opportunity once the meatballs are cooked you take them out and you've got all these sticky stuff in there you make the gravy in the same pan you cooked it in but we're doing air fryer which is totally healthy so we're going to do a totally healthy gravy as well so I'm going to turn on my little um, my little machine here my cooktop heating it up to about medium to high now this would be completely up to you how you start this recipe off I'm actually going to start it off with a little bit of butter just a tiny bit of butter if you are dairy free you do not have to use butter or if you're on a on a very strict gut health diet you could start yours off with just some tamari but I'm just adding a little bit of butter just for a little bit of color and just a little bit of flavor so I'm um, adding tamari a couple of tablespoons of tamari is going in there that's going to be our color and also our flavor to our gravy just give that a little bit of a mix through butter so all we have in here is butter and tamari and already I would totally just pour that <laughs> on top of my meatballs but let's take it a step further goodness me mustard I use a, a, a sugar-free mustard Dijon uh, sugar-free mustard from a company called my which is a French mustard company and literally they make the best mustard in the world so I'm adding a tablespoon of mustard in there giving it a bit of a stir it's already starting to thicken because the, the soy or the tamari is really bubbled down in flavor so the last thing that we need to add is kombu water that is our stock right a little bit of kombu water goes in there I'm gonna grab up my spatula got my little my little handy spatula just give it a bit of a bit of a twirl a bit of a mix the color from the tamari is what's really gonna help your gravy here because the tamari obviously is a dark color and gravy is not white unless it's a white sauce and then it's not a gravy it's a white sauce but if you're wanting to make a gravy and it looks like a gravy and it has that wonderful flavor then you need to I'm just having a bit of a taste it needs to have something really deep and meaningful like tamari it's a very deep flavor so that is now our gravy taken away I'm gonna add just a little bit of black pepper also I'm gonna have a proper taste not just with my finger I'm gonna have a proper taste but you notice how I'm starting to really this is on high and it's bubbling down what I'm trying to do is to reduce the liquid in there and as it, the, the liquid reduces the flavor intensifies for a gravy so no need oh my god that's so good <laughs> so delicious no need to add any flour to thicken your gravy we thicken it by this bubbling action this reduction that we have going on that's how we thicken our gravy and yet yeah, it does taste really good by the way I'm gonna have another one only cause so I like that. <laughs> Alright. So that's bubbling away nicely. Really, really nicely. And I do want to reduce it down just so it thickens a little bit. I've got three minutes on my meatballs. I'm just looking at the time here. Three minutes on my meatballs. So the last thing I'm going to finish it off with, and I don't even think I need to move the camera. I'll move the camera just a tad. Just a tad so you guys can see what I'm doing here on the board. Um, when I was in uh, Meatballs for the People in Stockholm, they served their meatballs with um, gravy, of course, mash, which I've already made, and I'll show you guys later. And they also served it with some cucumber pickles. But I have to say, as much as I enjoyed my meal um, there, the pickles I found to be too sweet. There was too much sugar. So you guys know me, and you know how much I love pickled anything, but we make our pickles without sugar. 
So I'm going to make a really quick um, zucchini, oh, sorry, cucumber pickle for you. And this little machine I'm using just makes it into spirals. You could make, you could cut your your cucumber. You don't have to use this machine. And all I'm going to do, oh, get it into the right position for a start. Can you see what's coming out underneath? Pretty cool, huh? This is just to make it look fancy. If you don't have one of these, you could peel your cucumber or you could just simply slice your cucumber really, really thin. And like I said, we're gonna make our own pickles because I don't use any sugar in my pickles, but I still want that lovely vinegar hit. And because I'm doing these pickles literally to order, as we call it in the chef world, because I'm doing them right now, they're gonna be lovely and crunchy too which is going to be a real bonus to this dish to have this wonderful crunchy pickles so those are like that but look at the ribbons aren't they aren't they just they're just the cutest things ever they're going to go into a bowl i'm keeping an eye on my gravy don't worry i'm not letting it boil down to, to it's too thick i'm just wanting it to be at a nice thickness so we got our pickles in there and then i'm going to take directly from my pickled onion jar you guys know my pickled onion recipe as well. Uh, I'm taking the juice directly from the jar because it's that juice there, that, that, that wonderful apple cider and inulin juice that we make from our pickled onions, which is going to give our, pick, our cucumber, our quick pickled cucumber, the most wonderful, wonderful flavor. The other thing that the Swedish love to use is this herb here. Can you see that? It's called dill. So dill is, um, has a great affinity with fresh pickles, but it also has a wonderful affinity with um, salmon. So you'll find quite often that the Swedish use, if you've ever had like a, a Swedish style cold smoked salmon, they will use dill in that salmon as well. So we're going totally Swedish and we're gonna add some dill into our pickled cucumbers. They can sit there for a while. I'm happy with that, that little, um, that little gravy now see it's thickened up really really nicely it's going to be beautiful give it a bit of a stir and you can already see it's lovely and thick you can see that huh can you imagine the flavor that we have now got in this sauce just by adding a little bit of butter or you don't have to add butter remember that it just gives it a gloss all i've done here is i've given it a gloss you could start just with your tamari your mustard and then all you need to add is your kombu water and you have gravy. Just like that! I know, right? So awesome! So awesome! Okay, let's think about plating up. Because our meatballs did tweak um, my attention. And they did... Uh, oh, yeah, our air fryer is done. So I'm going to bring you guys back. Back down here. Here we go. Because we're going to finish off the dish now. It is time to plate up. As we say in the chef, the chefy world, it's time to plate up, clean our bench down. Let's grab ourselves a plate and let's see what's happened in our air fryer. So uh, seven to eight minutes, depending on the size of your meatballs. Oh, they're hot. I should probably use tongs to pick them up. Hey, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> they look and they look really juicy too look there's still some give in there when I give them a bit of a squeeze so I know they're wonderful and juicy and what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to drop them straight in to our gravy that we made there because we want to get them covered in that wonderful wonderful gravy so here they are having a bit of a oh, I'm sorry that don't you guys reckon how good does that look isn't that great? Like if you, like I said, if you've ever been to Sweden, you will know. If you, if you know any, if you've got any Swedish friends, you will know those are Swedish style meatballs. But if you've ever been to IKEA, you will also know that those are Swedish style meatballs. So they look fabulous, absolute. I'm so, I'm so, so happy. Um, here's my plate. I'm going to plate it up on. Over here, I have something I prepared earlier, which is my cauliflower mash. I don't have to show you guys how to make cauliflower mash because, of course, cauliflower mash is one of the foundation recipes of the book. So um, if you've got the book at home, cauliflower mashes, I don't know what page it's on. It's on a few pages because I use it a bit. So that is in the book. So I didn't want to show you guys that because it's so basic to what we do. But let's plate up. So we're going to start with our cauliflower mash. And let's put that down this end of our... Ooh, 
lovely and creamy our cauliflower mash lovely and creamy so much flavor there as well so much wonderful flavor so that goes on first the next thing that we're going to do is probably the most important part of this whole feature is we're going to add in our meatballs so this is the perfect portion for one person one hungry person and when I look at this I get extremely hungry because this for me looks like heaven on a plate these gorgeous meatballs this wonderful gravy just a little bit of, I, I, I'm gonna add more but I'm just gonna start it off by that little bit of a dribble there <laughs> mm, licking my fingers and then of course that amazing very simple cucumber pickle we made with a little bit of dill this is what the Swedish do really well they match the fact that you've got oh look at that it's just this lovely big bit of cucumber they match the fact that you have got you know something quite rich when it comes to the meatballs they're quite rich right in that gravy there's a, there's a lot of things going on there so we need to make sure that we um, balance out this is the, this is the Swedish they, they're making sure that they balance out the flavors of this dish by not only having the meatballs and the gravy and this wonderful creamy mash which is normally potato of course we're using cauliflower lovely low carb great vegetable won't spike our insulin levels which is good and then the last thing I'm going to add is I'm going to try to extract as many pickled onions from my pot as possible because I'm out. oh no no that looks not too bad I thought I was out I need to I need to fill this up I will just get raw red onions slice them thinly, thinly and put them into the same liquid because you can double up on your liquid so let's add a little bit of that as well I'm just gonna put them down this end so we've got a little bit of contrast and the Swedes will also use some ligand berry jam which is um, a type of berry very um, very popular or easy to find in Sweden not so easy here so if you really want to go the jam route you could use my unsweetened or sugar-free jam here as well I've got a sugar-free berry chia jam you could do that but this is it <laughs> okay oops not it oh gosh I forgot you need some more of that gravy right how good does that look is that not dinner fit for a king or queen of Sweden how good is that oh, gosh can I just turn it around look at that gravy just like piling down there this is a fabulous dish and if you look at that you would think that can't possibly be healthy you just saw me make it it is 100% healthy and it's good for our gut and it's good for weight loss and it's good for anyone who's got diabetes anyone who's got IBS any of those awful symptoms um, that sometimes debilitate our life you could eat like that <laughs> which is pretty awesome so there you go turkey meatballs Swedish style and um, with a lovely gravy cauliflower mash my quick pickled cucumbers and also my pickled onions as well as I said that is lunch that is um, that is lunch set for a king that king today is my husband Mahi this, oh he's happy he's happy he's about to eat this all right guys love you so much and we will talk soon and we will give you lots of recipes and lots of inspiration so we can all stay healthy and um, and delicious all right guys we're gonna talk to you soon bye